kind of think I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I completely forgot what I was supposed to do, and I sewed it on wrong. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sewing another dress. I know, my channel has turned into a sewing channel. Well, you know what? When thrift stores were closed, for most of my channel's life on YouTube, I gotta resort to other things. So, sewing. I really love making sewing videos. It kind of gives me the drive to actually finish something because a lot of times I'm like, oh, I really want to start this and then I'll start it and then I just stop. My mind is like, oh, I need to do another craft. I need to do another hobby. Whereas if I have to document me actually making it, I get things done. So in this video today, I will be using the McCall's pattern M7948, also known as my favorite pattern in the universe. And what's really cool with this pattern is that you can kind of Frankenstein it. And what I mean by that, I mean there's multiple ways you can recreate this dress. I will I'll show you right here the pattern I'm talking about. What's really cool with this pattern is that there's three different styles of dress that you can make. If you have a good imagination, it's limitless. I mean, maybe not limitless, but there's a lot of options that you can do. When I mean you can make a bunch of different things just using this pattern, I'm not lying. So I did make a video a few weeks ago about me making this pattern of dress. The dress is not in this room, it's somewhere else because I was wearing it anyways. I also had made this dress out of an old bed sheet. It's so adorable. I love it. And it is the three tier. So like there's like the tiers here and the, the tiers here, I guess, all the fun ruffles. So this is one version of the dress. The next dress that I'm gonna show you this one here, I actually made a belt to go with it. Just one long piece. And what I ended up doing is in this dress down here, these are the pattern pieces. Um, They're labeled nine. You need three of them. I took those pattern pieces, the nine, because I like the width of them. I made three, but also I doubled the length. So I just added this piece and this piece together to get this long piece. And it's so adorable. So what's really cool about this pattern is that I downloaded it online as a digital PDF, which means I can make multiple copies of it. So if I make something or I ruin the pattern piece or I make it too small, I can just print more pattern pieces. Downloading a digital PDF does take a little bit more time in the sense that you have to print it all out, make sure you have the ink and a printer and paper, and then you have to cut all the pieces out. And then it's like a puzzle and you gotta tape it all together. If you have the time, I think it took me like an hour and a half to do that the last time. But again, it's a pattern that I have forever now. And in today's video, I'm going to be using this material here if you watched my last thrift haul, then you will recognize it. It's this queen bed sheet that I bought for, I think, six or seven dollars, but it's this beautiful green plaid. I love it. I really wanted to make a dress out of it, but this one, I'm going to Frankenstein it. I also feel like Marge Simpson when she got that Chanel suit and then she kept sewing it to make it different outfits so it looked like she had a bunch of outfits. That's what I feel like I'm doing with this pattern. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to be using the dress style D from this pattern, which is the one that the woman is wearing in the photo. So that will be pattern pieces one and two for the bodice, pattern pieces 10 and 11 for the sleeves, as well as pattern pieces nine and eight for the bottom skirt of the dress. But how I'm going to do it is I'm going to make pattern pieces eight on the bottom, make them shorter, and move pattern pieces nine to the middle of the dress and make them longer. Okay, so it's been a few days since I shot the beginning of this. Also, my cute little sweater today is the strawberry one that I have made in a previous video. It's it's held up. I've worn it a few times, mainly because it is um, summer. Can't barely be wearing this outside due to the heat. A little update with this sweater. I gotta take the strawberries off of the back. I know, in my other video, I'm like, I need to add more strawberries. I wore it in my car. The strawberries annoyed the heck out of me because they would be pressing against the car seat. It was very uncomfortable, so the back has to go. They're cannot be any strawberries on the back. Definitely check out the video that I did and I will be linking it up here if you are interested and I will also be linking it in the description because strawberries are just gosh darn adorable. I did do a little bit of work on the dress itself, meaning I cut everything out. I don't know about anyone else, but the one thing that bothers me the most and it's just like, it's just such a hassle, but like it has to get done is like prepping things for projects. Something about prepping things for projects, it's just like, it gets in my head and I'm like, I don't wanna do 
and it's gonna take too long. It's very daunting. I cut out the pieces already. If you are wondering how to cut out pattern pieces, I would definitely suggest you watch the video that I did before where I made this dress here. I showed more detail of me cutting out the pieces and how I cut the pieces out. Today I just did it. These are the pieces. I cut the front piece and I cut the back piece. What I ended up doing on the pattern, what's great is with PDF patterns is that you can print them out, cut them up. If you don't like them, print them out, cut them out again. What I noticed with the other two dresses that I've made is that the shoulder part was just like so wide and I didn't care for that. On the actual pattern paper, cut this part like shorter. I think it used to come out to like here and then like go down. I used to go like this and there was like a big piece here, but it was like too much shoulder for me and I didn't like it. So I just cut it up. And if say in the future, I'm like, oh, I want a wider shoulder, reprint this and recut it out. So it's not a big deal, but I ended up doing that with the front piece along with the back piece. The next pieces that I ended up doing was the sleeves. So I cut two sleeves out. The only thing that I'm not really showing in this video is just the pattern cut out. I will be giving like step by step of everything else that I'm doing. It's just the pattern pieces. I needed to get that done with without filming it. This is where I divert from the plan and I Frankensteined my own design with the pattern, which I will put like here so you can kind of see the part, like the first tier. So after like the bodice, the first tier is actually numbers eight and number seven. Instead of using the seven and eight in the middle section, Section, I'm moving that down to the bottom section and I moved nine which was at like the bottom tiers I moved that up so I ended up cutting out two pieces of nine these are my two nines so I cut out two nines and then I cut out three eights, which are over here. Seven, eight, they look exactly the same. It doesn't really matter. So I have three of these and my plan is to do a longer middle piece and then a shorter small piece. With the nine pieces, what I ended up doing was I added an extra three inches on the bottom of it. And then on the eight pieces, I took off three inches. For my sample dress, as you can see, this part was seven and eight, and then this longer part was nine. So I just flipped them around. Eight will just be a smaller piece. Nine will be a longer piece. You put them together. Still the same length as these two tiers here. If that makes sense, I hope it makes sense. It makes sense in my mind, but my mind can be a little crazy sometimes. So hopefully you catch my drift. Another thing that I do have to do is I have to cut out two pockets, but I'm not gonna cut the pockets out of this material because this is nice material. I still have a lot left, but I don't wanna waste it on like a lining and pockets. What I will be using, which is, I don't know, what I will be using is a white bed sheet that I thrifted and I'm going to be doing the bodice and the pockets in that fabric. I also am going to do something different for this dress as well is I saved the very top of the sheet. You know your bed sheet at home how there is like the top and the bottom of the bed sheet you can tell the difference because it is like a little bit thicker and it has like you know the stitching on it like it's folded over. So what I ended up doing is I cut there's so much of it. I cut the whole top of it off. I can make this into a belt. What I'm doing here is I am just pinning the outer layer of the bodice and the inner layer of the bodice before I take it over to the sewing machine. And while I was at it, I ended up pinning all the eight pieces together that will form the bottom tier of the dress. The outer shell's done, the inner shell is done, so I just have to put them together. And how to do that is you want your outer shell of the bodice inside out, and then you want the lining to be the correct way. So you don't want the lining to be inside out. And then what you do is you take the lining and you put it into the outer shell. It does take like a little adjusting. So I try to line up the tops of the shoulders together. Basically what you want is you want the two good sides to be facing each other. And then I start here. So what I did is I pinned the neckline of it. So when I flip it inside out after it is sewn up, it will look really nice. My next step is I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and then I think I'm just gonna sew the tears together, but I'm not gonna do any of the ruching or anything like that until tomorrow. Yeah, it's already six o'clock and I have a little bit of a headache and I know if I work myself too much, then I'm just gonna feel awful for like the rest of the night. 
I did the zigzag method for ruching on the ruffled part of the sleeve. Now I'm just ruching it up. I am also doing a quick rolled hem on the end of the sleeve before I sew the sleeve together. I finished like assembling both the sleeves. I did a rolled hem and then I attached the ruffle part to the bottom of the sleeve part, which is the, the flat part. And then this curve is for the arm. So it's gonna go like this. And then I ended up going with, again, the zigzag dental floss method. So I did that all here so that way I can have like a little bit of ruching. So the next step is I'm going to fold the sleeve in half and I'm just going to sew this up. I'm going to do it to both of them and then I can attach them to the bodice. Sleeves are now connected. Now I just have to attach them to the bodice. When pinning the sleeve to the bodice, I always like pinning where like the armpit is gonna be first because it's like a nice flat area as opposed to the ruffling that I'm gonna have to deal with in a little bit. For like the ruching, what I really like to do is I like to use safety pins, and I've mentioned this in other videos as well, but I like safety pins because they're not gonna go through the zigzag stitch, so like I can still pull them through, but also like I can attach it to the fabric so it doesn't get lost while I'm sewing it together. Now I just have to sew this together. I finished the bodice, the top of it. Now I just need to do the back. For the back, I'm going to be cutting halfway down the middle, which I think is this line here. I wanna try something different. I wanna try to put a little button in the back. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I think, okay, it's already been done. I'm gonna cut. I have this flipped inside out. I think I'm going to just sew this little V up, gonna pin it first. Just pin that down, I think that will work. Okay, the bodice is done. Definitely different than what I'm used to. I'm used to just like having like the really puffy sleeves. So the sleeves like don't have all that puff, which is nice. Don't know if the sleeves themselves are like a little too long. I think they're okay. I think they're okay. All right, so I was initially going to sew all the nine pieces together, and then I realized that I want to add pockets to it. I've made a pocket before, so I kind of think I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I completely forgot what I was supposed to do, and I sewed it on wrong, so I had to take all the pockets off and re-sew it, and this is where I'm going to continue in the video now. So what I wasn't supposed to do, and this is the same thing that happened to me last time. So what I have to do is I only stitch up to here to the mark is the only part that I stitch and then I don't stitch this. So then that way, when the pocket's done, I can put the pocket back through. It won't be seen. I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. So I'm just going to cut and cut a little tiny notch out. And the reason why I cut the notch out is so that way when I line it up with say this piece, the two notches will line up and I know that's where I don't sew. As you can see, this is where the notch is and the notch is matching up with this pocket here. I'm going to put a pin this way because then I know that I'm not going to sew this part. I just have to sew this together because if I sew this part, then there's no way that I can put my hand in the pocket, right? My next step is I'm actually going to sew the pockets together. And that's pretty much it on the pockets. I installed the pockets. I did it. I put pockets into a, a dress. Like this is what it's gonna look like on the inside. So you can't even really see it. And then up here, of course, is... Wanna come in, sir? Topsy. Such a little baby. Since it's all attached now, I'll zigzag stitch over the dental floss and then I can just like ruche it. Let's go do that zigzag stitch. I just use regular dental floss. I have not run out of this dental floss yet and I've made four dresses. Then I secure the dental floss on a safety pin and pin it to the fabric. <laughs> So I'm just ruching it up like this, attaching this to the bodice, then attaching the bottom part. And then when I get to the bottom part, what is this? That is not the bottom part. That is random scrap material. When I get to this part, the bottom part, I do have to like fold over and do a nice hem on that, but that is not our problem right now. I think I'm gonna attach it. And if I can get to the hemming and I can get to all like the little finishing details today, that would be amazing. I did not. Yeah, I just wanna get things done today. Here, I'm just gently pulling on the dental floss so that way the fabric starts to gather. And when it's gathered in the way that I like it, I pin it to the bodice. 
Now I'm just doing a rolled hem at the bottom of the dress. I just want to show you how messy it is. This is not pretty. The inside is what it is, and you know what? Those dresses are just like it too. I just want to let you know that you don't need a serger to have a pretty dress, although I would love to have a serger. I just can't afford one right now, and I think once I do get a serger, I will go through all my dresses just to make them a little bit more stable. As long as the dress looks good on the outside and I can wear it without it like falling apart, that's all I want. All right, now on to my favorite part, which means everything's pretty much done. I just have to iron down all of the hems to make them nice and flat and then I also have to iron down this part of the bodice and then give it a nice top stitch as well as add a piece of elastic and a button so I can like you know close it up that way my head will be able to fit through this. This is my button bag. I thrifted this like last year and then I have a bunch of buttons inside and I'm just looking for something that maybe could match this. Like this one's so cute. Oh my goodness. Like that button. Gosh, it's such a cute little button. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this one. And for the elastic, I'm just using this, which I bought at the fabric store a while ago and then just never used. Here, I'm going to attach the little button. This, I will be going through both layers. So last minute decision, I switched out the elastic band for something a little bit thicker because the button just kept falling out of the thin elastic. This still has like a lot of stretch and I made it almost like a little bit smaller than the button itself. So that way the button just can't come undone without me actually having to unfasten the button. So if you are gonna use this method, definitely use a thicker elastic. For the belt part, again, I'm just using the top of the sheet. So what I have to do is I have to unstitch all of this. So here's a little tip. When you're unstitching something, you would probably use it like, you know, like this, and you go one by one, you pull this apart, do it again. Instead of doing it this way, if you flip it over like this, just put there, and then if you pull tightly, There we go. I unstitched this in a matter of seconds. Wow. And before I pin it up and sew it, I want to just iron it flat. I did notice that there is this like this little extra flap of fabric here. I don't want this to be too big, so I'm just gonna leave it like that and just start pinning. Now that it's sewn, I just have to flip it right side out. flatten the back where the seam is. I also folded over the raw edges of the belt and stitched them up. The dress is done. I think it's pretty cute. I definitely think it's more rary than cottage core. And originally I was going more like the cottage core route, but uh, it took a turn and it's definitely a prairie style dress. And I think it might just be because of, I've never had really a sleeve that looked like this. I think it's really cute. I did have like a few little issues here and there, but I mean, not as bad as that one dress that I made a long time ago. And you know which one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Queen's Gambit dress. That one still haunts me. A few things that I might do in the future, not something I really want to tackle right now, make these sleeves like a little more billowy. So I think I would have made it like a little bit longer so I would have a little bit more of the, the ruching going on. That's something to take into account if you do want to make this for yourself and you want to ruch your sleeve, just definitely add on. Another little thing that I have a little bit of issue like when I do this, I feel like a little bit of tightness right here. Here, and I don't know if that's because of the outer layer or the shell. I definitely just feel some in my shoulder and I don't know, like I've, I've made the other dresses and they've turned out pretty good. I think it's just because the other dresses had a little bit more of 
of the puffiness up here. And I think that just gave me like a little bit more arm room. And I'm one of those people that like, I like my arms to be cozy. I don't want to be super tight in anything because then it will just bug me for the entire day. And I'll just be in a horrible mood. The bottom, I think what I would do next time is instead of like adding inches on to the nine piece, the bigger piece and shortening the eight piece, I think I would just leave the pieces as is. Although like the bottom is super cute. I think I want like the bottom ruffle just to be a little bit bigger. So that's something to take account of. And I do want to make this other dress out of this purple material. Don't know where it is right now. Onto pockets, they're okay. I think what would help me is the pocket, the bottom of the pocket like ends here. I think if I moved it down to like here, cause when I stick my hand in, I have to like really like shove it in there, but then it's pulling up here. So it's not very comfortable. I got to work on my pockets, but I mean, other than that, you can't even notice that the pockets are there. So I think I did a good job hiding the pockets. I think I just need to execute the pockets a little bit better. Again, I've only made two dresses with pockets in and the other one was a disaster. So I think this is a win. Another thing is with the top of it. I don't know how I keep doing this, but every time I make a top, the, the neck hole just seems to get smaller and smaller and smaller and then I couldn't fit my head through this one. So I added the button. I think because the neck is so tight, I think that might be the reason why like all of this is a little tight. I think if I just undid this and cut it open and just made it bigger, I think I'd be much more comfortable. So I think that's just something I have to work on. I'm really new to sewing and I say I'm new to sewing and I've made so many sewing videos, but I still am trying to learn, especially taking a pattern piece and fitting it to my body type because that's where you kind of like get into some trouble. Cause you could be like, oh yeah, I'm definitely this size, but I'm only this size like here and on my arms, but the other parts of me are a different size. So it's like figuring out what size you are for like what part you're making of the dress. I think that's pretty much it for my review of this dress. If you have any questions that I didn't answer or didn't fully explain, leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer any questions that you might have, especially when you started off sewing. Some things don't really make sense and yada, yada, yada. If you are new to my channel, you like sewing, crafting, and thrifting, please subscribe. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.